and today we are going to be dealing with two topics that you wouldn't think have too much of a connection. Global statistics show that one in four women experience some kind of abuse and one in seven men do. Amilani Pereira has decided to launch her collection called the Unbreakable Collection in which she addresses gender-based violence. Yasodara Patanjali, one of Colombo's most bravest and colourful personalities, if I may say so. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see Finally. you too. Finally. Finally. So, you have been so vocal about your experiences and that's why I said bravest personalities in Colombo. Your experience of domestic violence was in the UK and you had the system over there help you. Yeah. How, how do you think our Sri Lankan system can make changes to get to where you get to that level of support that they have over there? I firstly, I think it's uh, not fair to say that we have the best support in the UK either. I don't think any country, it's as far as I know, it's, um, it'll be a mix because even in the UK it's very hard to work out where to get help. Or I was lucky because my ex-husband had me arrested and on kidnap charges and so when the police got involved because I was arrested and they identified it as a domestic violence case then a lot of things fell into place but had I had to reach out to services on my own or identify things on my own I wouldn't have been able to do it so so there is that so I was very lucky in a way that uh, I was arrested uh, so there's that um, one of the key things like recently I I had my first experience with the police in Sri Lanka yeah. for, for a harassment, for a sexual harassment case that wasn't, uh, I wasn't the victim. But you were told not to get involved. I was told not to get involved because I'll get uh, as if someone I And or I'll, I'll be attacked and I was putting my husband out of my shoes, I was injured, my own and all of that. But anyway, I wasn't the same thing like that. Um, but what I found was there's not much sensitivity in handling it. So I had to go to the um, police meeting mm -hmm. and sit within touching distance of the person that I had killed. Oh my god. And yes. So obviously he had not harassed me. It was an okay situation. I, it was still uncomfortable. But what if it was the victim who had to sit yeah, right and which means, and this was just a, a digital thing, it wasn't even a physical thing. What if I'd been raped? What if I'd been beaten? What if I'd been stopped? It's and I'm enough. sitting squashed to next to this person. It's bad enough that you have to relive the trauma right. when you're talking about this and then to have that yeah. person right there. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, being in the same waiting room, uh, waiting to call in, um, you know, as I said, sitting, touching distance to each other. I think all of those things, those are like some of that, um, that, that victim or the, the survivor's um, mental state and understanding of how to protect and comfort that person and make it easier for them to go through is something that Sri Lanka really needs to work on. Yeah. So this panel discussion that you listened to today. My take is we need to every single one of us. That's why earlier in the room I grabbed the mic and I said survivor of childhood sexual abuse and domestic violence. Unless we all step it up and say, hey, I've been broke on the bus, I've been stopped, this has happened to me. Because I'm ashamed of the issue, a mentality and how it works, totally understand it. But um, we can also choose to not to be shamed. That's true, right? I very strongly choose not to be shamed. I, none of these experiences that I've experienced in my life are my fault. I didn't do anything to deserve to be treated this way. So why is it shameful for me? So I choose every single day not to be shamed. Therefore, I'm extremely loud about it. And I want other people to, because I'm a little sick of being loud. Kind of. I know there's a, there's a few of us who are loud uh, in, in Sri Lanka. But it needs to be everyone. It needs to be everyone. Because it is everyone. 
We don't know a single woman or girl in Sri Lanka or anywhere in the world. Let's not make this a Sri Lankan problem. It's a global problem. We don't know a single woman or girl. It's about that, yeah. that at least a high percentage of the men that they associate with have done something. Because otherwise, every woman could have suffered. This is true. I didn't mean to, but uh, if everybody can be just loud, please, that would be great. <laughs> then I can go home and sleep. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I am with the absolutely stunning Carolyn Jury, who is the current reigning Mrs. World. Hi, Carolyn, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very well. Excited as always to be in your company. So when Amalani asked you to be the showstopper, did she tell you about the domestic uh, gender-based violence angle that they're going to have over here? Yeah, she definitely she told me like uh, United uh, Nations Population Fund is coming on board and the dress what I'm going to wear, every flower there is a story in it. So deep inside I thought like, okay, if I, if I will not take this opportunity, and who will take this? No point, I will this, but I need to support these innocent children. And I want the world to see them, not in a sympathy way, I want the world to see them, how incredible talent they are. An amazing job, even though they were abused and they, they have gone to a very Survivors. Hard, exactly. And still, they are such a talented girls, a bunch of incredible children. What other ways do you think the fashion industry can take in order to spread more messages of empowerment and just handling all of this in a better way? I would say fashion can take in a better place, yes, that's true. But the dress we are wearing, everything gets stolen and we need to appreciate them, not just be showing fashion with the brand and things or not. We should appreciate them who have been stitching the dress and come up and show them. So we can change people's life. You know? That's what, in my view of fashion, I would say. It's incredible to have uh, Mrs. Sri Lanka like you because of the way you think. Thank you for joining. You're welcome. Me. You're welcome. Thank you. I am with Kinita, communication specialist, who has spoken a lot about the topic that we are discussing today. Kinita, thank you for joining me. And let's start off by you telling me what you think of the panel that we were a part of today. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think these conversations, as we were even talking about in, in part of the discussion, is something that we like to, you know, shove under the carpet. It's embarrassing. Nobody yeah. wants to talk about, you know, domestic violence, like IPV. You don't want to talk about sexual harassment. And the thing is, I think that panels like this are fantastic because now women are saying, I'm not going to shut up about this. You know, I need to talk. I need about to talk this. about this. And you see it on our social media and stuff. So many women are saying stuff like, you know what, this happened to me. You know what, this happened to me, my boss did this, this guy on the street did this. And I think, you know what, good people, fantastic. So, yeah, so I think panels like this legitimize the conversation because a lot of the times women are suppressed and told not to talk about these things, whether, you know, my boss did this to me or this person on the bus did this to me. And now women on social media are talking about it and I think it's fantastic. I think the more that it becomes normalized to discuss these things, it becomes normalized to say, I'm not going to suffer in silence. And keep I'm, quiet. I'm, and keep quiet. Yeah. Okay, so... Something that we I was having a chat with some women over here and one thing that kept coming up is why is it that it's victim shaming and not perpetrator shaming? Why do you think that happens? I think a large part of that is because we are protecting um, we are protecting our economies and we're protecting our um, I don't want to say masters, but we're protecting the people who are the breadwinners, protecting the people who run the families, run the businesses, run everything. Because it's men, yeah. right? So we are protecting the so-called patriarchal order. By staying quiet, we ensure that we are not exposing these men to what they're doing because we're terrified. And the thing is, nobody will be on our side. That's true. So he's got all the power. He's got all the power. It, it, is a, it is about that power differential. And I think it's also something to be discussed. Who's going to be on your side, right? If you talk about something happening, how many people are actually going to have your back? Say, say your, your male boss has done something to you, you talk about it. Is the rest of the office going to be on your side? No, <laughs> not at all. So what do you think of more fashion brands getting mm -hmm. on with causes like this? Because what Amilani did was it's really incredible. brave yeah. and like she said, there was obviously some kind of backlash Pushback, that yeah. she received. I think, um, again, like I said, things like this legitimize these conversations. So I think what Amilani did is incredible, it's really great. Um, but I think also fashion has a real responsibility to be ethical right now. 
um, not just in terms of sustainability, of course, with the environment, but also in terms of the labor that it uses, which is mostly women, in terms of, you know, paying people properly, again, paying women properly. We, we live in Sri Lanka, we know it's a huge oh garment industry, right? So All I think, exactly. So I think fashion has a responsibility, a very important responsibility, to get involved with gender rights, get involved with GDP, get involved with paying people properly. Um, and I think that the quicker they start doing this, it's going to be better for the entire economy. And obviously better for women as well. This is true. Thank you for your time. I'm going to let you get back to your shopping. Thanks. Thanks, Christina. Thanks for having me. I am with Sherla, who is a designer in Colombo and a survivor of intimate partner abuse. Hello, how are you? And nice to have you here. Thank you. What does it feel like to have more people back you up now when you talk about your experience with being a victim of abuse? I mean, it's really great. I think what's really important is being able to have those conversations and being able to be honest and open about what happened to each of us individually because it's only in that honest dialogue that other people feel comfortable to actually come out with their own stories and talk about what they experience and it's only by doing that that we're able to empower other people and make sure that other women survive and let them know that it is possible. So There's a network absolutely. for them. Yeah. As a mother, what yeah. do you think the changes are that you can take at home to prevent situations like this from manifesting in of a children's life. Absolutely. So that's another thing that I'm really, really passionate about uh, is talking about gender-based violence, uh, talking about sexuality education at uh, school level with kids. Um, so that's all work that I've sort of got my fingers in. Where my own child is concerned, I always thought from day one that having honest, open dialogue and conversation with her is just the best way and the only way that I will be able to protect her. Uh, and to give her the tools and the resources for her to be able to think on her feet and for her to know that she has rights um, that are you know easily accessible and to know that there are ecosystems uh, of people and of places that will support her and anyone else that she knows of her. You have an Instagram page on which you tend to have a lot of live conversations about uh, violence and about overcoming it. Can you tell people at home how they can connect with you and be a part of the conversation? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me um, with the handle at kpj underscore fitlight. Super easy to find. Uh, I'm very active on Instagram. The objective behind all of the conversations that I have and the work that I do with my Instagram is really enabling the survival journeys of other women. Uh, it's also about creating healthy mindsets. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I'm going to let you get back to shopping. Yeah, have fun. Nice to Thank you. I'm with a phenomenal woman who is definitely one of the toughest women I have met in a while. She was a part of today's panel. Please welcome Ms. Sashi Steven, who is a part of the Women's Development Center. Hi Ms. Sashi, thank you so much for talking to me. Can you tell me about how you started the WDC, your mother-in-law? How did it come about? Actually, it started in the 80s and during the JDP conflict time. Yeah, lots of women were widowed or um, the husbands were missing. So during that time, women had to fend for themselves. And uh, they had no way because they didn't have the capacity to do that and also the protecting their families and children. So then they came to um, Pearl Stephen um, and to ask some help because she was working in the church and she was a pastor's wife. So that is how we started in a garage. Having started over there and come to this point now where a part of your message has been on a fashion runway, what does it feel like for you? Amazing. Never anticipated coming in on this arena and talking about violence against me. But this is a global issue. It's not a local issue. It's not a local issue. But how local issues and the global issues come together and we have to make a stand to prevent violence against women. Not to prevent, you know, actually stop. And eradicate it. Eradicate it. 
if there is someone who is watching who would love to support the women's development center is there any way that they can contact you or reach out Yes, definitely, because we, you know, anybody is welcome, you know, if we are in Candy, well, of course we are Candy based organizations, but there are a lot of Colombo based organizations as well, so we are here, like, you know, we want to sort of reach out and anybody wants to reach out, reach out to us, they are most welcome, they can, you know, we are on website and uh, anytime. Would you like to tell everyone the website, please? Uh, www.womendev.com dot org. <laughs> Thank you Ms. Sashi for your time and for everything that you taught us today. It was an honor to meet you. It's a pleasure. I am with Ms. Ritsu, the country representative for the UNFPA. Hi Ms. Ritsu, thank you so much for joining me. I want to start off by asking you, why did you choose Aminani Pereira to be a part of this project? So Aminani had been really interested in the addressing the issue of gender-based violence okay. and that's why we came together okay. and her passion towards women's rights and willingness to help women who are in a difficult situation really like, inspired us so that's why we decided to work together in this collaboration. So uh, you worked with this collection with her. Can you tell me a little bit of the process that you all went through in order to put this out? Right, so first we were discussing like what's the main concept for this collection. And we went through a very lengthy discussion like what should be the key element of the collection. So she had this idea of depicting the process of healing, which we really thought it was wonderful and was beautiful. But also like a strong message that women are strong. survivors. Uh, yes, it's survivors. a matter. Exactly. So it's not just about the women as victims, but it's about really gaining the strength. Overcoming. Yes, exactly. So that was the very sort of collaborative process. For the UNFPA personally, what was it like getting your message out there on such a big platform like the fashion week. Yeah, it was just phenomenal actually. We were all so excited and uh, it was just so emotional actually to see our logo there with this wonderful collection that we have seen. It's not only beautiful but it's just so powerful and its message was extremely clear. And we were also happy that there was a Sinhala and a Tamil language used in the collection that is very original and Sri Lanka. So we were so proud and really happy to see this beautiful collection. If there is someone at home in a situation of gender-based violence, is there any message that you would like to tell them? I want to tell them that uh, they are not alone at all. And we are with them. And there are so many support systems that you can tap into. So we really like trying to speak to someone they trust and uh, come to a safe space where they can be really feeling like a normal human being. Uh, we totally understand that the situation is critical, but uh, there is help and there is hope. So we to know that. Thank you, Ms. Ritsu, for everything that you do, not only for the UNFP, but for us as well, because this is something that you are doing for us because it betters our society. So thank you for that. Thank you. I am with the star of this day, Amilani Pereira. Hi, Amilani, how are you? Hello, no, I'm doing great. Thank this you. is absolutely incredible what you have done, this collection, the unbreakable, and like what you have put out there with the message. Why did you decide to go for the name The Unbreakable? So Unbreakable was, um, uh, uh, it's, it's basically it's a partnership with UNFPA. Yeah. So what we had was that we had a discussion on how we should go about it and what the uh, project name should be. And then definitely the whole collection is about empowering a woman and surviving and, surviving and let, letting them know that 
that is not the end of the day. You have a bright future. You can stand up on your own. So with, uh, with United Nations uh, Population Fund and with the team discussion, we came up with the name Unbreakable. So the colors in this collection, they are a wide variety, but they're supposed to signify a deeper meaning. What is that? So uh, that's the first thing which I decided when I was initially designing the collection. Uh, so the colors represent um, the deep burgundy regrets that represents the, the abuse okay. and the violence uh, journey of going through abuse uh, of the woman's life. And slowly with the prints, I'm uh, transferring the girl into the growth section where she grows within the painting and she is becoming stronger and stronger and uh, when it comes to the blush pinks and the pastels along with the feather detailing, it portrays the freedom and the empowerment. And like the lovely feeling yes. that you get when you know that yes. no one can control you, only you can control yourself. Yeah. Today has been a day full of heavy conversation and really, really upsetting stories. But as you can see, we are taking a step in the right direction in order to eradicate gender-based violence. If you see a situation in which you can help make a change, please speak up. Until then, stay tuned. This is Christina Brito signing off.